Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Talal Al-Aboudi, and yes, what you heard is true. Um, I'm a magician, master hypnotist, NLP, NLP advanced practitioner, short for Neuro Linguistic Program. We'll talk about that in detail just in a bit. But first, I know at least one of you is thinking, okay, the magician is going to do some tricks, right? Okay, so yeah, we're going to do some tricks. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you something that's never been performed by a magician, and you'll know why in a bit. Here's what I want you to do. Look at your hands, okay? Just look at your hands. And you're going to say that between your, the palm of your hand and the rest of your arm, there's a thick line. It's kind of noticeable. Okay? Look at both of the hands. You're going to find in both hands. Sometimes it's hard to find, but it's okay. Now what you're going to do, you're going to imprint both of these lines on top of each other, and then you're going to look at your fingers like this. And if you're normal, just like most people, one hand is shorter than the other hand. Okay? If it's the same size, that's fine. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take the hand that is shorter, and if they're the same size, take either hand, and you're going to look at it. Now when you look at it, we're going to do something. We're going to do some chanting, and basically you're going to talk to the hand. Okay? We're going to say something, two words, eight times. We're all going to say, you have to all do it for the magic to work. Okay? We're going to say, we're going to look at the hand, and we're going to say, grow longer, eight times. Okay? There we go. One, two, three. Grow longer. 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 I want... Okay, one more time. Grow longer. Okay. Now get the same lines again and print them. Put them back together and check out what just happened. Okay. First thing you want to know, this is not a magic trick. This is not an illusion. This is true. This is real. There is a mind-body connection. And that's a demonstration of it. Second thing you need to know. I know some guys are going to go home or maybe in the break say, Oh, does it work on other parts of my body? <laughs> I don't know, but if it does, let me know. Okay? Anyways, so, now let me tell you, so now you got, you're happy with the magic part? Let's talk about the other part, which I believe is way more interesting than the magic part. First of all, what do I do? Okay? What do I do? Let me tell you something about this weird hypnosis in OP work. Basically, I studied everything about psychology and unleashing human potential in the UAE, and I traveled outside to learn from the best in the world, the best hypnotist alive, the guy who founded the field of neuro linguistic programming. Maybe you heard about in Arabic, but much And my job, when I came back to university, was basically to fix people's problems. The guys would come to me, Talal, we need to do something about my girlfriend. The girls would come to me, Talal, we need to kill my boyfriend. <laughs> girls are much more and then after a while, I started helping people. They wrote about me in the university's paper. Everybody's reading the paper. What's going on? University's magazines, other magazines, and the mass communication courses. Courses where they, you have to interview someone. They're interview, interviewing me. And then after a while, they said, okay, Talal, can you work in the counseling center because you're helping people? I said, sure. I worked there. And after a while, athletes started coming to me. They're like, I heard that this stuff can help me. And it did, actually. There are some athletes who are doing fine in whatever they're doing, you know, any sport, and after some coaching, they are winning first place in every <coughs> tournament consistently, just by mental coaching, with hypnosis and other stuff. And then I started working with companies. You know, uh, there is one company in particular, a multi-million, multinational company, a 30-year-old company. That company, we managed to break their sales record during the financial crisis, okay? Just by doing all this stuff. Now, how do we do this stuff? Actually, what's the thing that makes a difference? Well. See, if you, maybe you heard about this in the Bible, it said, Ye shall know the truth, where the truth shall set you free. One guy, I believe he's the guru when it comes to intimate relationships, his name is Travis Decker, he said, the ultimate homework, if you want to have the best intimate relationship, is to speak the truth every single time in every moment. So my motto is, keep it real. Okay? So, let me tell you something that happened with me at one point. And this is something I know a lot of you here are, probably going to ask questions about it because people usually ask me these questions whether I'm doing a speech or normally in university. There's this one day, no, sorry. One day in my university, my professor comes to me and says, Talal, you're into this kind of changing, helping people, transforming life, lives kind of thing. I have a surprise for you. And I said, okay, yay, what is it? He said, we're bringing a speaker who's an expert on leadership, motivation, and all these other things. And what this guy is going to do, he's going to teach you the building blocks of success and happiness. So basically, if you listen to this guy, you're going to be successful and happy. And I said, okay, interesting. He said, so you're going to be there in that lecture. I said, you betcha I will be there. 
So I go there. I go there, I see this guy. He had a you bit know, short, kind of my height, anyway. A bit chubby, gray hair, all that stuff. And he was standing on stage saying, um, today I will talk about you know, the building blocks of success and happiness, and if you listen to me, you'll be happy and successful, and you'll get everything you want in life. And you'll figure all your problems out, and everything will be fine. When he said that, first of all, I was happy. And second, I'm looking at my friend, I'm like, okay, he's using big words, right? I'm like, oh yeah, big words, it's gonna be awesome. So this guy stands up on stage and says, the first building block I want to teach you is something we call inspiration. Inspiration is something very important. You want to find something that inspires you in life. You want to do something that you enjoy. You want to do something that makes you wake up in the morning. And he kept talking for 30 minutes about inspiration. And then he moved to motivation. This is when I started getting pissed. You'll know why I did. He started saying, you know, motivation is that fuel that's going to keep you going. Motivation is that thing that if you fall, you're going to get back up again 30 minutes of motivation. I'm, I'm done for it. At that point, I was like, excuse me, I have a question. My professor immediately was like, oh my god, I was going to do this again. <laughs> and I said, he's like, yes, young man, you have a question? I said, yes, I do have a question, old man. I didn't say that. <laughs> okay, but I wish I did. Anyways, so I said, you're telling me that, you know, motivation and inspiration is that building block for success. See, I knew that stuff way before, but I just wanted to mess with his mind. And he said, yes, if you have it, you'll succeed, blah, blah, blah. I said, well, it doesn't work. He said, what do you mean it doesn't work? I said, it really doesn't work. I said, the first time, let me tell you something. Me, it was a hall, you know, a lot of people said me and all these guys, the first time we liked a girl, we were very inspired, believe me. And more motivated than you can ever imagine. <laughs> we didn't get anywhere. Okay? He said, were you persistent? I said, yes, and I came across as a stalker. <laughs> okay? People should teach you what to do or how to get from where you are to where you want to be. And then, I said, I have another question on that. You're saying I should be motivated. Which I like, some things you need to be motivated in life to do. Studying, going to the gym, all these other things. But people never teach you how. Isn't that funny? Everybody's saying you should do this, you should do this, but nobody's teaching you how to feel like you want to do it. Okay? And the third thing I want I, I also asked, I said, I have a third question, old man. Did I say old man? I said, you're saying I should find something that inspires me. Which I agree, everybody should do something they're enjoying, they're having a good time doing, and it's great. But how do you find that? What? I said, do I, should I try every major in my university? Or maybe I should try every job in the business field. Who knows? Maybe my inspiration outside the business field. Maybe my passion and motivation is to be a male khataba. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, how do I know, right? But see, what we're going to do today is I will teach you techniques that you've probably never heard before that work beautifully, amazingly, with companies, individuals, whatever you want. And we're going to answer these three questions. Now, question number one, motivation. A lot of you, I'm sure, they're not doing so good in the universities. Some people are going through probation and they cannot go back because they just don't feel like studying. Very simple. What you want to do, you want to train your unconscious to take in the idea that you are motivated or you will be motivated or you will do that thing that you have to do. So you get a piece of paper, very simple, and you write on it, why must I study every day? We're not saying why should I study, we're saying why must I study. Because the word should neurologically has a different impact on your body and your attitude. The great Tony Robbins said, if you need to change your shoulds into must if you want to do something. If you have a lot of shoulds, you'll should all over yourself. Okay? That's it, these are his words, I'm like. Okay? So the first thing you do is you get in the paper and he starts writing something like I study every day because. You come up with a reason. You might have enough reasons, but after a while you might run out of reasons. So you want to brainstorm some reasons. And then, this is the important part, you want to read this every day. Okay? As often as possible, so it sticks in your unconscious. But you don't want to do it too much. We don't want you to be obsessed with studying. I mean, your friends are going to come one day and you're like an, an addict on studying, and they're like, hey man, let's go have fun. You're like, no, man, it's tricky. No, no. We, we don't want you to do that. Okay? So this is one way to get motivated. Now, the second thing I want to show you, which is how to find that thing that inspires you, and this is very exciting, the girls are going to like this. Not only that you're going to find that thing that inspires you, whatever you want in life, you can find with this lady, even your ideal husband. See, the women are like, wait, husband, wait, 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 wait. Okay? okay, and this is powerful because there's something in the brain called the reticulate activating system, RAS. And lucky for us, it sounds like cross. Okay? I heard this from Tony Robbins as well. And what this does is very fascinating. See, you're looking around, you see a lot of people, and you see a lot of things, but your brain makes you notice that thing that's important to you. If you're thinking about a car, you're like, wow, I want to get a car. you start thinking about this car, when you're in the, on the street or in the road, you see that car more often. 
now because you're thinking about it. So what you want to do, let's say you're saying something like, I'm living my passion in life, you're looking for inspiration, and it's blank, whatever you want. That blank could be, I make money doing living my passion in life. I'm speaking on stage, I talk to people, I'm working in the comfort of my home. Same thing, and again, you want to read it as often as possible. You can read this as much as you want. And for those of you who are going to try it with the husband thing, just an advice. A friend of mine, a Sudanese guy, he said, Allah, I've been doing this. Oh, where is Amber? You can use this. Okay? <laughs> He's like, a Sudanese guy, he said, Allah, I'm doing this thing, I'm meeting these girls that match my list, but it's not going anywhere. I said, show me your list. I'm looking at it, I said, well, you missed the most important thing of all. He's like, what? That she actually likes you. And the guy looked at me, oh, Allah, I'm the Lord, I know. <laughs> No need to say that. Anyways, so you do that. Whatever you want in life, your brain will find a way. You might see it, it might just pop in your head, or you might start looking for it in places where it's going to be found. Okay, now the last thing I want to, uh, the last technique actually, this is the most powerful of all, by the way. This is the thing, the belief. See, religions, sorry, religions are based on belief. Why? You give someone a pill, that doesn't do anything and you make them believe you're going to be healed, guess what, that person will be healed. It's been proven scientifically so many times, okay? The power of belief can change so many things. See, for me, I'll tell you something. A while ago, when I was in my university, I was attending a TEDx AUS. I come from American University of Sharjah. Thank you very much. Anyways. <laughs> anyway, I'm sitting there, okay, I'm sitting just like all of you and I'm looking at these speakers and I see this guy, Mr. Ali Sloom, I'm sure you know him. Okay, he's known in Al-Ain and Abu And this guy was phenomenal, he was exceptional. That day was, what he did was something I've never seen anyone do. Not even he did that so well on YouTube and the other videos. And I met him after his speech, I said, Mr. Ali, I'm sitting here, I'm looking at you. I want to do that someday. I want to be a speaker. And he said, well, Talal, I know your background about, uh, I know him before, he said, you know, I know stuff. He said, I'll tell you what changed in my mind because he was talking about being stuck in his life and then how he moved. He said, what moved me from being stuck to where I am is two things. First of all, I believe that I can do anything. Two, I believe that being a speaker is something that I do, even though I wasn't doing it. And because I believed, um, he was doing that speech. Okay, and belief is not something you say, oh, I believe, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, I believe. It's, it's not like that. Okay, it's more than that. It's just telling someone, don't take it personally. I mean, now you expect them to feel good about themselves. There's a process behind it. So what I did, I did the same thing he told me. Uh, just do this and believe and all that stuff. And guess what? I'm here. So it works, okay? Thank you. And how do you do that? It's very simple and it's one of the most enjoyable processes you're going to do. You're going to write your story, the story you want to live, as if it's happening now. You want to write that I am a speaker, I do this, I am this, I am this, I am this, I am this. And you want to repeat it in your mind. You want to believe it so much. And you, this, by the way, has so much power that science could not figure out most of how it works. Let's say you're saying, I want this ideal job, as an example. And you're saying, I am, I'm living this, I am, I'm living this. If you went for interviews before, and you go for interviews after doing this for about a couple of weeks, your voice will be different, the ideas in your head will be different, your body language will naturally change, and everything will just work for you. And for those of you who believe in the law of attraction, we've seen things that just blow our minds out. Paul McKenna said something very fascinating. Chance favors the prepared mind. I know I don't know if it's his uh, quote that I heard him say. And now the final thoughts I want to leave you with here. See, we're doing a wonderful event here for the youth, which is great. Okay, but as I told you earlier, I'm a guy who likes to keep it real. See, the youth needs motivation. It's really cool. But there is something we're forgetting. Very important. We're not a Western society. We're an Arab society. Our parents have influence. We need to educate the parents. Okay, if you like it, make some noise. Okay. Okay. <laughs> More than 50% of you are stuck because your parents don't think it's a good idea. Okay? If you educate the parents, believe me, you'll have happier lives. Okay, you will. Miss Sarah Kazam said in Arabic, I'm translating in English, she said, You're the product of your parents' parenting. Whatever you're suffering from, by the way, it's conditioning TV, social, life, parents, and all that stuff. If we taught the parents something, you're going to be the future parents your kids are going to be something different, okay? And I hope you guys enjoyed my speech. You can take these techniques, do them, give me feedback. Believe me, they work. They work for multi-million companies and for individuals. And it, it just makes people happy. Thank you very much.